Greetings, I'm Lisa Tucker, and I'm so glad you've joined me for this session focused on strategies to support English language learners. As of December 31st, 2021, the Okaloosa County School District had a record-breaking English learner enrollment of 1,503. Our district also serves over 58 languages among our L and non-L students and families, which provides our district with a rich and rewarding cultural diversity. One of my favorite quotes is from author Amy Chua, who asks, Do you know what a foreign accent is? A sign of bravery. Our English learners of all ages represent great resilience and emotional strength in their move to the United States. For some, this move has been greatly anticipated and it's filled with the exciting transitions to a new school, culture, and group of friends. For many, however, the move has been traumatic due to political or even personal family issues. For all English learners, the stress of gaining acceptance while learning a new language can provide ongoing challenges. Administrators, faculty, and students are crucial to the support and successful assimilation of L's in our school and in our community. For the educator, it's important to remember no matter what content area subject you teach, the English learner is progressing through various stages of English language development. The receptive stage is marked by primarily receiving new language learning through listening and reading. The student may experience a perfectly normal silent period while in the receptive stage. This can be very scary for both the new and experienced teacher. It's important to remember the student is still learning during the receptive stage. He or she may just not be able to demonstrate knowledge yet in the normal formats. Gestures, illustrations, role play, and other visuals are extremely important for the student as he or she begins to connect academic vocabulary with context. The productive stage is typically slower to develop as the student begins to build confidence and competence in speaking and writing. On this screen, I have attempted to illustrate the difficulties and the opportunities embedded in balanced literacy for L's. English language acquisition involves speaking, listening, reading, and writing development. While academic achievement is also an equal focus, building content area vocabulary, providing comprehensible instruction, adhering to the English language development standards that our state adopted in 2014, and providing frequent and fair assessment. While a perfect balance cannot be achieved every single day, this is the goal for which we strive. The Florida Department of Education Student Achievement Through Language Acquisition Bureau provides this information regarding the ongoing focus of support for L's in the classroom, beginning with providing clear objectives, knowing your English learners, knowing their hobbies, their special interests, maybe their goals, um, without intruding on their personal journey and personal story about arriving into the US, providing feedback both to the student and the parent with affirmation about the student's progress no matter how small, modeling for the student in the classroom, both uh, teacher modeling and small group modeling, which leads us to the important reminder of inclusion in cooperative learning opportunities. 
collaborative learning opportunities with other English speaking peers is a powerful, powerful component to the English acquisition growth. Providing non-linguistic representations is essential. Both the illustrations, infographics, role play, demonstrations, all of these things help build the foundational connections between new language, new words and sounds within their context. As educators, we have the exciting and rewarding privilege of welcoming and modeling respect and value for our English language learners. Never underestimate the, the vast importance of a welcoming classroom. Many times as educators, we see so many of the problems or hindrances within the uh, building of academic content for English learners. It, is, it can be time consuming and it can be very daunting. We hope today to focus not on the problems, problems perhaps with uh, curriculum limitations or technology limitations, staffing limitations, or even legislative issues, but we hope to focus today on the possibilities. Rather than admiring the problems, let's look at the possibilities each of us have in our individual classrooms, regardless of the subject area we teach. It's important to remember that limited English proficiency is not a disability, but rather it's a temporary situation. Ls need time to develop language skills in order to achieve competency in academic tasks. And what teachers do during this process is a significant impact on student motivation and self-confidence. Not all students will progress or acquire English at the same rate. There are many who look at state averages for English proficiency goals, you know, between two and four years, but students are not cookie cutter. Even those from the same culture and language background will not all achieve English acquisition at the same rate. It's important to look at the individual student and to praise progress, no matter how small, because it is a brave thing to be in a new country, learning a new language, while developing academic mastery at the same time. While there are many instructional resources and strategies for English speakers of other languages, there is no silver bullet. There is no magic solution for accelerating the English acquisition process for K-12 students in a healthy way. It is very important to communicate the individual rates of time that students will need to gain confidence and competence while developing English fluency. The most important advice, the most important reminder is to start somewhere. It is very overwhelming to teach a student with language needs, especially a newcomer to the country who's coming in with very limited and maybe little speaking capability. The goal, start somewhere. Choose one thing. And in starting somewhere, you'll find you're making a difference by following these four reminders, making it visual, reducing linguistic complexity for that newcomer as many times as you can, adapting instruction, remembering to repeat and to be flexible in the types of feedback that the student can provide to show mastery, supporting the home language with the tools you have. Maybe you do not have access to an ESOL interpreter at your school or in your classroom, 
but you do have access to free tools like Google Translate or Microsoft Translator, which can help both with instruction and conversation. And then most importantly, developing culturally responsive classrooms. Your classroom is influenced first and foremost by you. You set the tone, your procedures and your interactions with your own teaching peers as well as your students set the culture in your classroom by demonstrating respect and by modeling the affirmation and inclusion of all students you're helping to to build value and acceptance for all of your students As we consider making it visual, think about pictures as well as picture dictionaries. Think about demonstrations that can support new vocabulary development or even quick video clips that can enhance a student's visual image of academic vocabulary. One educator said, but how do we even know if they are a visual learner? This is not about learning modalities or learning styles. This is about moving from one language or maybe two or more languages to English and having a visual connection with a new term, being able to see that word and then see it in action or to see a phrase or a concept in action or in a picture goes a long way in building that foundation and that new memory needed to develop comprehension skills. Flashcards and adapting think, pair, share to think, pair, draw can be very, very powerful for the English learner. This can provide context for new academic terms and it can also pull in very valuable peer uh, inclusion and peer discourse with English speaking students. Also consider the visual multilingual word wall. Quick access to frequently used question stems and content area terms in a place where the English learner can always look is a very, very powerful tool as um, especially in the secondary classroom when students are moving from class to class to have a consistent place to look for question stems, uh, maybe translated in his or her language, or quick terms that will be used in the lesson that particular day or week. Very, very powerful in uh, providing that foundational growth. As we consider supporting the home language, the content area glossary and the word to word dictionary, both of which are allowed on state testing, should actually be used in the classroom frequently, but we should not just issue the glossary or the dictionary to the student and let that be it. We need to model the use of that glossary and dictionary more than one time. We need to, to model the use of those tools throughout the school year and certainly not just at testing time. Some of the most successful English learners that I've met in the high school level um, are those who use their content area glossary daily. Many have achieved already tier C, the highest um, tier of English proficiency but they continue to use these tools because they're developing word choice, they're developing um, spelling, they're deepening their understanding of different ways to use words in different contexts, different academic settings for words. So these are powerful tools, but they need to be modeled for the student. Google Translate and Microsoft Translator are online trans tools that assist in supporting the home language. And you can use these with an iPad, laptop, or Chromebook. With Google Translate, the iPad camera 
can be used for instant document translation for audio, conversation mode, as well as text mode. And I regret that we're not in person today so that we um, could actually practice this, but I look forward to opportunities to work with you in your schools and demonstrate how powerful these tools can be. The Google Translate Chrome extension is a free tool that is very easy to embed to translate an entire website or web page. And Microsoft Translator is automatically embedded in Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook email for translation. I'm going to show you how you can use these tools uh, later in the presentation. Our ESOL interpreters um, for the majority are rotating in push-in support for classroom instruction. For those of you with high populations of L's in your school, you probably don't have enough ESOL interpreters to make it to every classroom every day, but they are prioritized by the administrators on staff at your school to support the tier A students, the students at the lowest level of English proficiency. So if your school does not have an interpreter, remember you still have access to our phone-based language interpretation service for help with both student conferences, parent conferences, other language needs. That service is um, funded through our Title III project. And if you need access, you can certainly speak to your school counselor or you can contact me by email and I'll be glad to help you out with that. It's a powerful tool to help, especially um, with the, the languages that are infrequently spoken among those 58 languages that we serve. Adapted instruction includes tools that you would use for other students, but for the English learner, these are powerful tools that may be used more repetitively or in a slightly different way. <clears throat> for instance, graphic organizers and guided notes are powerful for all students. But for English learners, these can help provide background knowledge and embedded home language support, especially when the culture is very different. A history teacher who's teaching about the Declaration of Independence or presidents of the United States, if you have an English learner who has not even ever heard the term president or understood a form of democracy like ours, um, you have a lot of background knowledge to build for that particular student. Graphic organizers and advanced notes or guided notes are very, very powerful. Rewordify helps to adapt your instruction and many times your directions for assignments and assessments by reducing linguistic complexity for beginning level L's. There's free access for Rewordify, and you see the, the website listed there. You'll have the ability to, um, to change the Lexile level and, and really customize some content for those that are at the beginning levels of English learning. This also helps with your communication to parents as well. And we have a lot of teachers using this service. Mentor sentences and word banks help to provide scaffolded support for written response tasks. Even for classroom assessments, um, changing a test item, not changing the standard that's being assessed, but changing the test item to a more accessible way for the newcomer to respond um, can sometimes mean providing a mentor sentence or an example sentence to, to rely on or word banks to help support uh, limiting choices when there are multiple choice samples limiting the number so that the student has fewer items to read. Moving back and forth between two or more languages can be very, very taxing. Group speak is a non-threatening group opportunity to practice seeing and speaking academic vocabulary in context. 
this helps not only your English learner, but your struggling reader who has spoken English his whole life. Group speak is very powerful and gives that uh, that student who's speaking English for the first time a very comfortable and safe place to practice new terms. Including L's and in peer collaboration, again, very, very important, especially while the student is in the receptive stage of English development. Adapted instruction also includes frequent repetition, adjusting questioning techniques and providing frequent and informal checkpoints throughout instruction, and modeling sentence structure. Being sure to avoid overcorrection of a student's verbal responses. Instead, repeating back and modeling correct grammar or pronunciation or sentence structure is a great way to adapt instruction and support the student's level of language learning. English language learners need time. They need time to practice English writing and sentence structure. In this silly illustration, I have typed a brief sentence. I did this to illustrate a very important point. This is still a brief sentence. That same brief sentence in Japanese doesn't look at all like our brief sentence in English. Our students from other countries such as Japan, Vietnam, Korea, China have unique challenges in translating and transcribing in the English alphabet. No matter if the student is elementary or secondary, don't forget that tracing the English alphabet and copying example sentences are very powerful, basic foundational practices, no matter what age the student is. These are needed, these skills are needed in order to support productive stage growth. Very quickly, to illustrate how simple it is to translate a PowerPoint slide into another language, I'm providing these screenshots as examples. You can see at the top of your slide um, a, a ribbon that goes right across, a ribbon menu that goes across your page. So if you have a particular slide you want to translate in Japanese or Ukrainian or Somali, simply highlight the English text you wish to translate and then choose the review tab from your top menu. As you see with the red arrows on the screen, you'll select review and then select translate. When you've selected translate, the translator menu will appear on the right side of your screen. As you see with my red arrows, you'll use the drop down arrow to select the desired language for translation. Make sure that you've set it to go from English to your desired new language. Then you'll select insert. I always remind everyone to choose shorter sections of text at a time to avoid any kind of complication. Many times longer sections of text um, may have a glitch or something. And there's always one educator who says, well, how do we know if it's 100% accurate? No online tool will probably ever achieve 100% accuracy but neither do our human translators. So it is very, very important to know that even within the last four years, great advances have been made 
within technology, both Microsoft and Google are outstanding global leaders in language translation. So they have improved um, a trillion fold even in the last decade. Another quick and easily adaptable tool is this graphic organizer. There is a clean copy available on our district website, ESOL website, but this simply shows how um, powerful this could be to collect one of these each class period or one a week or more than one if you have lots of academic vocabulary you're introducing. It provides a one pager with the English phrase or academic term, the home language translation, a mentor sentence or context example, and then um, a visual. Many teachers like to use graphic organizers in which the last component or the last square is an opposite or an antonym. And that's not advisable with L's, simply because they're at a very visual stage of language learning. One illustration was a third grade student from Japan who was learning a multi-syllable word, and that happened to be the word beautiful. And his teacher had gone through the top three squares and in the last square chose to put antonyms, and she started with ugly, okay? So ugly has four letters. Beautiful is a lot more complicated to say and spell. The student attached the meaning of beautiful with the easier to pronounce and spell ugly and then went to his next teacher to just proudly say you are ugly. He was trying to give a compliment because he had attached a meaning with an antonym. So it's really, it's, it's part of the nature, you know, looking at the meaning, seeing all that on one page, making sure all that goes together and not confusing the student with, um, with opposites just yet, especially if they're in the beginning stage of English development. When developing word walls for English learners, um, sometimes a teacher will say, well, I only have two English learners in my class and they're not even in the same class period. I don't have space to devote, you know, a whole bulletin board to them. A word wall does not have to be a place on the wall. It, it could be a laminated file folder that is, you know, it gets to sit on the, the student's desk or it's in an easily accessible place. So be creative in thinking about your word wall for English learners. Also, don't focus only on academic vocabulary. Consider the support question stems that students need to know in order to follow directions or to listen and understand what's being asked of them in both um, instructional content as well as assessment. 
the when did, what is, how many, and who is, is just as important as learning new terms like photosynthesis and hypothesis. Developing cultural competency includes modeling and expecting respect. This many times begins with learning how to pronounce a student's name. Sometimes that can be a struggle, especially for a busy teacher with 28 other students in her class. Starting with the student's name and modeling and fostering acceptance by promoting partnership in helping new students as they're in the process of acquiring English goes a long, long way. Not just assigning the student a peer buddy, but really modeling and varying the peer collaborations within the classroom. When we include L's in peer collaboration, it is important to prepare groups to accept them, to understand that Zishuan is really, really smart. He just doesn't speak English yet. He may not be able to write in English yet, but he's listening. He's learning to listen in English. Um, empowering English speaking peers to, to take partnership in the support of L's by drawing pictures to support during group learning. To understand that because the student is quiet does not mean um, that he's not friendly. It just means he's still in the process of learning the language. ediplomat.com is an excellent free resource to reading about cultural etiquette um, just to build awareness for both you and and your students, and it's a great tool to prep you before your first parent-teacher conference, uh, especially when you have some unique cultures and languages represented in your school roster. The next four slides are simple questions, just four questions as you develop lessons, as you work collaboratively with your department to prepare lessons, questions to ask um, and, and items to consider as you prepare your, both your resources and your students and your classroom. The first question is in regard to the resources you have to support home language. Would that be a bilingual dictionary, a content area glossary, do you have an iPad or Chromebook for Google Translate or other translation tools? Is there an ESOL interpreter at your school who supports or another paraprofessional who speaks the student's home language? It's important to think about these items. The second question is simply what visuals can I add to support content area vocabulary development? What characters, what terms and definitions can come alive with visuals or short video clips? What kind of process or demonstration can I use? Or infographic or flowchart, realia, what, what things can I use to make the content uh, connect to their new English terms. Third, where and how can I reduce linguistic complexity? Can I use a word bank and fill in the blanks for this section uh, to make it a little more accessible for my English learner? Can I provide matching terms and definitions? What about on an assignment? Um, you know, what types of mentor sentences and sentence frames can I supply to help the student understand the, the sentence structure and the expectation of the written content? Is there a diagram or illustration I can ask for in lieu of a written response? And how can I use Rewordify to simplify text? Fourth question, how can I enhance content area vocabulary? 
Is there a place where I need to provide or activate prior knowledge? Is there a graphic organizer I can adapt that will help with content area vocabulary support? How can I prepare my small groups for English learner participation? How can I build respect and cultural responsiveness within my English speaking students? How can I include ELLs in small groups to hear peer academic discussions? How can I employ group speak? And in what ways am I using frequent repetition of key terms in my classroom? Each of these things will help more than just your English learner. As we've mentioned previously, group speak is a powerful strategy. No one is singled out. This encourages engagement and it enables speaking, listening, comprehension practice. You're saying a word and hearing it in context and connecting it with the visual of whole group and small group instruction. All across the curriculum, we have these common goals. For the English learner, they need opportunities to hear language. They need to see new terms. They need opportunities to say new language, to write new English words, and then to connect those words with meaning. All of these things put together mean language gains equaling learning gains. As we conclude, I want to provide this information with some updated resources for elementary and then on a separate slide, uh, resources for secondary L's. For elementary, we have Mango Languages for grades three through five. That's to build English acquisition. We have Spanish English bilingual books, free PDFs for download available on our district ESOL website. I've included some information about iReady Spanish lessons and flashcards, picture dictionaries, and newcomer kits on request. Um, we do have grant money that we are excited to spend for teachers who need these resources in their classrooms. WIDA practice activities are available. No WIDA account is needed. These are not secure testing things. These are free to anybody with an internet um, access. And so this link takes you straight to those grade level specific practice activities, which can be adapted for use in your classroom, especially your ELA classroom. Content area glossaries are free PDFs available from the Metropolitan Center for Research on Equity and the Transformation of Schools. And then we have Google Translate, Microsoft Translator, Mac Scholar and Phonics for Reading Workbooks. For our secondary students, we have Mango Languages for grades 6 through 12. This is an online account for Tier A students to help with English acquisition. It comes with five free family accounts so that family members can also use the uh, program to develop English proficiency. Edmentum L Foundations is used in the developmental language arts class or intensive reading classes. Um, schools where administrators have requested these. Sometimes it's part of the SPP, but any teacher of developmental language arts or intensive reading can certainly inquire about these accounts to support tier A beginning level students. Voyager Language Live is an online support for high school developmental language arts classes. Brain Pop for L's is available and iReady. I've listed some links there about the Spanish lessons that are available. There's a limited number of those. 
but you'll see um, for math there are some lessons for K-6 which would include some of our middle school students. We do have flashcards, picture dictionaries, and newcomer kits available on request. Simply email me if that's something you would like to have in their, your classroom. We do practice activities, which I mentioned on the elementary slide. That link is available for you too. It goes all the way through grade 12 with grade level specific activities. The content area glossary link is there, as well as a reminder of Google Translate and Microsoft Translator. Additionally, teachers may use Duolingo for Schools to set up an account for your own classroom, your own L's within your classroom. Simply use that link and follow the online screen directions to set up a class with the interface directions in the student's home language. Again, that's free. That does not require any kind of district support or setup. For parents and staff, Duolingo.com is free. We can uh, remind our parents and families of ELLS that they may sign up at Duolingo.com. All it requires is an email address. So there are many staff members and faculty members who are um, Duolingo users who are learning languages so that they can speak at least a little bit of conversational um, language with their English learners in their classroom. That's an exciting tool. We do have Title III funds available for before and after school tutoring for ELLs. Also, this funding can help support L parent nights if you have an, uh, a need to, to have a group meeting of your L parents and you need an interpreter. We have funding where we can support that. Some schools have also developed English classes for parents and community members, and that is a huge and growing need within our great community. As we close, I hope that you'll consider the L Classroom strategies or resources you plan to explore in 2022. Please make sure to let me know if you find a resource that you'd like to recommend. Some of you may have access to content area specific um, supplementals, maybe to support your history class or your, your ELA class. And if you find something um, that you think would really support your ELLs, please send the, the name and the ISBN number to me and I'll look into uh, possible funding for that for your classroom. I'm happy to help. More than anything, I hope you'll remember how valuable you are in creating a safe place for English learners. We can't do everything, but you are starting somewhere with something to make content comprehensible for these wonderful students who are joining our community. You are changing the world, and I'm happy to serve with you. Thank you.